Hey, John here. Thanks for tuning in again. Okay, 447 crankshaft. Just like any crankshaft, how do we know if it's still serviceable or it's not? So let's find out. Initially, no corrosion visible on it and no real defects that, are, that I can see in it. Now, can I just put it back in the engine and go, yeah, it's great? No, I need to do some tests to find out if this is actually an airworthy crankshaft. So this is the device that I use to confirm or deny is the crankshaft concentricity correct or not. So is it straight? So when it turns, does one end wobble? Does the other end wobble? No, we want it to be straight within 2007 inch max. So this is all heavy material and the crankshaft sits in here and each one of the dial indicators goes against the bearing. So let me set this up. And we'll uh, go through the process of how we do that. Okay, and then make sure that it's all centered on the yes it is. So it's supported by the bearings, which is the way we want to do it. Um, this right now is set for a 582, the width on here in between. Uh, and it fits on this one, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. So let's, uh, I'll move the camera and let's take some readings on it and see, is it straight or not? I'm happy with my setup and where my indicators all touch the crankshaft. So now I'm just going to turn it. I'm going to use the connecting rod to turn it. And I'm going to read my maximum reading, maximum deviation on each um, indicator. And I have done that already and recorded those. So I will show you where there is a potential issue here. I've recorded all of my dimensions. Um, the mag end, that end, um, is this is in inches. So that's one, one and a half thousandths. This is one thou. And then right in this area right here, I have one and a half thousandths. And at the PTO end, I have two thousandths. Uh, that's high limit. So that I'm concerned about. Now, what I may do after, I'm not going to true this right now, but I want to make sure that the connecting rods are good uh, clearance-wise and wear-wise before I put any more work into this crankshaft. So this is the preliminary examination. So is it within spec? It's right at the high end of spec. We'll remove the crank from this device and go over and set it up again to check the connecting rods. Now, so we get an accurate dimension of the big end connecting rod clearance, I need to make sure that all the oil, everything is washed out and it's absolutely just bare in there. So what I do is I put some gasoline in there. It's the same as it says in the book. You should wash this with gasoline, uh, pure gas, not gas with oil, but pure gas. And and you let it roll around a little bit and make sure that I get it nice and clean. All right, and then I'm just going to get the air blower and I'm going to blow that off so it's dry. I'll do the same on the other connecting rod right now. So I swapped ends. Now I am on the uh, PTO big end. And it's the same procedure. Just make sure it's flushed out well, and then blow it out with air. So it's bare and dry. Now that I'm satisfied there's no oil in on the rollers, now I want to be able to examine the rollers. It's a little tough on this one. On the modern engines, there's a slit in here where you can actually see the rollers. Not all of them, but enough to have a good indication. Here I only get to look down a little slot in the side. Uh, and I've done that, and I don't see any corrosion in there. There's no corrosion present here. So unfortunately, I can't see the rollers in there as much as I could in a 503 or a 582. But I'm satisfied that I'm going to continue and check the clearance. So let's do that now. This is a device that bolts onto the crankshaft, as you can see. 
And this is a very accurate way to measure the radial clearance in the connecting rod. They have this listed in an old catalog um, as a tool that you can buy from Rotax. But as of like, I don't know, 10 years ago, I tried to buy one. And they said, no, we don't have one. You know, who we've never sold one, whatever. So I, I just made my own. Uh, functions the same way. There's a bit of an art, the same as there's an art in using the the official Rotax one. There's a little bit of art in this one too because this pad that's right here that the connecting rod is sitting on, it is on a thread and it goes up and down. Well, why is this? To in, in order to get this so that I can measure how much free play is here, I can't have the rod up like this because, of course, it won't have any free play, and I can't have it down like this. I have to have it absolutely at 90 degrees to this pin that goes across, the, the, um, the big end uh, crankshaft pin. So I've already adjusted this one, and, I, and I've got it in the right place. And as you can see, it takes very little effort once it's in the right spot to, uh, to be able to move this and uh, check the clearance in it. So that's how I do that. I'm going to record the clearance and um, I don't worry too much about <clears throat> excuse me where the the zero is because I'm really this is this is in um, five uh, half thou increments this one. So in other words a little looks like a lot. So that is so close to a thou and a half that I'm going to call that a thou and a half. So I'm going to record that um, that way. So this will be the mag end at 0 0.0015, and that's in inches. Now I'll do the same process on the mag end. It's exactly the same. I'll record that, and I'll check it against the specifications and see where we are. Now I'm set up again. Now I'm on the... Uh, PTO connecting rod um, it's well zeroed at the five and it goes to so close to six and a half again I'm just gonna call that a thou and a half so now I have my specifications recorded for the for the radial is uh, a thou and a half on each connecting rod well that's fine now when I look in the old historic paperwork um, documents for 447, they give us the axial play clearance, which is where the, the uh, thrust washers are on each side of the brass washers, so when it moves up and down. Yes, they published that, but they never published the radial, which is the clearance, the overall clearance in between the pin and how much does the rod move which is what we've got a thou and a half. Now, I measure the diameter of this pin that goes through the connecting rod. It's the same size as on a 503. So I think I'm quite safe to use the 503 specifications for that. Now, long ago, I made this little chart, and because um, I've been checking them this way for a long time, uh, new specification is... 0 0.0008 so just under a thou and then to one thou and three tenths so in other words this is the tightest it would be brand new and this would be the loosest it would be brand new so what do I have I have I'm going to call it 1.5 thousandths so one and five tenths and that equals 28 percent now I made this list up I don't know how many years ago uh, and it's uh, it's very accurate. So I consider that this, I will round it up, and we'll say there's 30% wear on this crankshaft. Now, how many hours are on this? I've no idea. Like, I have no way to tell. But with 30% wear on it, or 70% wear remaining, I'm quite happy to use this again. There you go. You've seen how I inspect crankshafts 
I do them all the same way, whether it's a 582, a 503, or this historic 447. So now I know accurately how much wear is on the crankshaft. Remember, there's no history for this. There's no hours written down anywhere. And we really need to know, is this crankshaft worth putting back in an engine and, and putting back in the service? This one, absolutely. Now I will uh, probably true it uh, and get that uh, extra run out, out of the back. Uh, it's at 2,000, and yes, it's within spec, but it's the high end of the spec. Not really happy with that. I'd rather um, have it much lower down than that. So um, anyway, that's that. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time. See you again. Bye now.